if you don't get that foundation, and I've made these mistakes, these are mistakes I've made. Uh, I mean, I, I'm a serial entrepreneur, so I have other businesses I do, and um, I've made all these mistakes, and I share these with other people for them to make their best choices, right? So my goals may be different from theirs. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. But in either case, some of the basic foundational um, of how you plan and execute your business uh, relates to everybody. Okay. You want to share some of that? Do you have anything that prepared? Oh boy. You know, Eric, I appreciate you asking these open-ended questions, but it's dangerous. Oh. I'll talk for an hour. Okay. <laughs> you need to stop me. You I need to have a red light that lights up on my computer. Like, that's, All right. You need okay. to pull back a little bit. But, but um, you know, basically one of the things, I'll start off with just the diversity. There are many programs. Um, there are city, county, state, federal programs. Um, I think there are great opportunities on the federal side, but is it for you? Is it for you? What is it for you? And so I, I did this talk this week in New York for the veteran conference. And I, I said, you don't go get certified and then try and get work. You find the work that you can provide value for a client, or maybe the EPA, or maybe it's the federal reserve, or maybe it's the GSA, maybe it's the army. You see that you could provide value that you're like, wow, I can provide a value. Not only that, I could be profitable because mm -hmm. you don't want to just get work. You no. want to get bottom line yeah. work where you're making a profit. Those two things fit. Now you set up your plan to say, I need this certification and this is what I'm going to go do. And this is the plan for how I'm going to go after the work. So, so early on, the reason I share that is if I could make money from being certified, I would have made a bunch of money. I was certified by every agency, city, county, state, federal. Right. Yeah. I had thirds. In fact, I was attending events and outreach programs. Uh -huh. I mean, you full-time attend outreach programs, oh, full-time, go to events. And some of them are great. Some of them are okay. Some of them you already been to. Yeah. So uh, you know, the next part, when, when, I, when I talk about that, I'll share with you how I look at that and how, to man how I suggest um, you look at managing your time. Okay. No, no, no. That's, that's, that's great. Uh, and, and again, man, you're just flowing. So you're taking me even off topic. That's why, <laughs> that's why I've, I've, you know, I, I've keep, I just keep going along the path that you're taking this conversation uh, yeah. because these, you are touching on all the critical points, right? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that you say that uh, in terms of, uh, because for me, what I've experienced recently is there's a lot of people teaching people say uh, how to do contracting. Right. Um, but I think that there's other things that are, like you said, is it right for you? What about the, the other side? What about the non uh, contract business side, right? Leadership, uh, mental toughness, resiliency, you know, all that stuff. That's where I see people are falling short in some areas. Um, even if you were given all the tools, right, per se, to do these things, what would you do with those tools and how would you use it? And so that's kind of what you've been talking about. And that's why I was really excited to let you keep going uh, yeah. on that line. Yeah. Uh, because I think, like you said, getting, bringing someone to your office, because um, I've had a few entrepreneurs do this. They have brought people in and um, you could give someone a contract, but are they ready for that contract? Can they handle the contract? Is it a profitable contract? Is it what's in their best interest? And I think a lot of those questions have to be answered. Hey, and when you're when you're when you're a young entrepreneur or newer into that industry uh, or whatnot, um, you know our excitement calls our judgment. If you're a real entrepreneur, you know I, I've been excited many times and lost some money. I mean, you know, I had a restaurant that was my MBA right there. You know, it's like spent all this money and it was cool and it was a thing to do, but. Um, is that what I should have been doing with my time and my money, my energy, my skill, right? Is that where the best place was for my long-term goals? Uh, so, so I think it's normal that the challenge is we also live in a, in a, in a silo. So uh, entrepreneurs are live in a silo and often don't have other entrepreneurs, especially in their lane or doing what they're doing. Yeah. And so their, their beliefs that they're doing everything right is only um, looked at against themselves. So they believe strongly, we believe, hey, this is what we're doing. I'm on track. I'm leading this. And, uh, you know, I'm the owner. It's going to be great. Well, what we need is other entrepreneurs to say, hey, what do you think of this? Not a pat on the back, like, great. You can get that from your family. Hey, great job. Way to go to start your own business and, and make it happen. But really, I mean, I say things to some of these small business sometimes. And if, and if, they're, if they're open to it, it's pretty raw. I'm just like, how are you making money? 
I don't mm -hmm. see it. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm challenging. I, maybe I maybe you know something I don't. Right, right, but right. But I don't right. challenge you to say, do you want me to push you or not? Or are you okay? Do you want a pat on the back? Because I could give you that, you could go. Or do you want me to challenge what you're doing? Um, because it's only when we challenge ourselves when we can sharpen that saw and make sure we're on point. Wow, wow, excellent. Where did you uh, first get your, so I, obviously I, I tracked, I saw you went to college, but let's go back even further. Um, do you believe you're always hard work to be an entrepreneur? Yeah, you know. Like when you were young or did you trade baseball cards are, or are, sell potato are, chips or lollipops? Boy, I'm a, these, these open-ended questions, this danger. So I do a little TED Talk thing in it, and I started off and I say, uh, I've always been a serial entrepreneur. At age 14 was my first hustle. Mm -hmm. I was handling out flyers, really. So I don't know how old you are, but you have flyers and you put them on cars and you put them on houses. Yeah. That's yeah. getting the message out. That's the advertising. That's the first Twitter, right? Yeah. Just yeah. You put the message yeah. and get it out no, there. I remember so, those. I remember those. Yeah, so you put a flyer out. And I was making cash. And then I started shoveling snow, mowing lawns, doing uh, uh, um, work supporting, you know, just some labor work for people. Uh, but yeah, after that, then I got caught up in the whole, uh, there was a little multi-level marketing, looking at that stuff. Okay. And how to okay. Build some real estate. And uh, okay. yeah, I do some real estate now. So, but yeah, ever since 14, I just kind of had it. But uh, my parents are immigrants. So um, uh, born here in this country, I thought, for sure, you got to get an education. And I still do believe that a little bit. But the schooling that you see on my on my on my LinkedIn or on my profile um, is good, but that's not where I learned to be an entrepreneur. Um, in fact, I think that what helped me most to be an entrepreneur was my boot camp for the Marine Corps. That training was fantastic. Yeah. Right? If I could do that, I'll, I'll share with you one quick example. When I do this little talk, I say, um, I call I call it the sharpshooter's blueprint, but a sharpshooter, you know, they handed me, I was 18 years old, they handed me a rifle, said, hit the target. And you could picture holding the rifle, hitting the target. Yeah. But you know, that target was 200 yards downrange. That's two football fields. Yeah, wow. Yeah, how do you yeah. do that? Well, the Marine Corps in particular, I think is the only branch that qualifies at 500 yards. So five football fields, I'm taking a, a rifle and hitting a target. How did I do that? And I did it, by the way. I shot expert and I qualified sharpshooter. How did I do that? And it was a big lesson. What I learned is a uh, very clean and well-maintained weapon, which I liken to ourselves, right? Our personal self. Yeah. We got to be mentally, physically in, 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 in a good place to perform, right? Be ready to perform. So this weapon was in great working order. And then we managed everything surrounding him in that target. So we learned about everything that's going to that's going to affect or impact hitting that target having a solid foundation watching my breathing watching the wind and squeezing the trip all these little things that you learn and all of a sudden you take this little round out of this rifle it hits five football fields and hits a target and so um i liken that a little bit to uh, being a sharpshooter in business mm, no i like i like that um what so you were in the marine corps um and then I see that when you got out, that's when you kind of start your business. And like I said, you're a solo entrepreneur. How did you get into construction in particular? Yeah, you know, I, I got out, I got my degree. And then um, after my degree, I got a job. I had my, my first and only job. And uh, I decided quickly it wasn't for me. Um, but I didn't know what I was going to do, quite honestly. I'm not going to, you know, I'll tell you, I knew I was not true. I wanted to do something. Mm -hmm. And I looked to leverage some of the um, small business opportunities in the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. So I did that. and. I floundered a little bit over the years because like I share now, I didn't do what I share now. I didn't plan it out. I didn't look at the opportunities. I just wanted to go get contracts and work. And I did. I landed contracts with the city and the county and the airport and, and it was going okay. Um, but I didn't know where I was going. Right. And then I went back to school a little bit more. I really found myself leaning towards construction. I always did construction, but now we're a prime general contractor. Um, and so I just gravitated towards that. And then uh, I did construction management for a long time. I'm pretty conservative. So I was a little nervous about the bonding. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the 8A, that's what made me turn to prime at risk because the opportunities were to great for construction. Um, I say for construction because I don't know how it is for IT or architect right. yeah, or yeah. things like that. Yes, yes. Right. But for construction, quite honestly, the opportunity was uh, 
very significant relative to the open market. And so I'm like, let's get the bond and let's go. And yeah. that's when, um, in the last 15 years, that's where I scaled and started at zero bonding and grew my bonding program so that we can uh, prime larger right. contracts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I see that. Well, um, along the way, did you, did you, so you, I know you did some of those smaller contracts. Did you ever work in the private sector where someone didn't pay you, like one of the big large GC firms? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That happens. Oh, I was, I was that guy, you know, everybody kind of goes through this. Some people get stuck in it and mm -hmm. live their lives as a sub that's check to check, waiting for it to come in, yeah. sort of a hamster wheel. I try and take them off. I try and talk them off the wheel. I'm like, I need you to just put your phone down and listen to me for a second because you can get stuck on there because you have a lot of volume. Mm -hmm. um, you're waiting to get paid. It's rare, and once you get paid, you got other bills. Yeah, it's hard to scale when you're always chasing your tail. Right, right, right. I've yeah. been there. I've been there. That sort of a. Uh, I don't. I don't know. You know. I don't want to blame large business. I don't want to blame the big companies. You know, they're trying to be a profitable company. Yes. I tell the small businesses, own what you do. Now, when you're first starting off, I tell you. I would take projects. I would take them if they were oh. low margin. I'd take it if I didn't get, because you're trying to grind, right, you're, you're trying to grow. Yeah. Right, right. But, after, but, but what I tell them is that's okay. Only as long as it's a means to, to, to something else, as long as it's a means to get where you need to be, mm. not what you're going to do forever.